Hi, my name is Damon Brown of DamonBrown.net. My main thing is helping solopreneurs, side hustlers, and other non-traditional entrepreneurs bloom. Welcome to this conversation. Today, I'm going to talk about New Year's resolutions, or more importantly, uh, New Year's habits. Um, there's an interesting discussion happening with James Clear. He's the author of Atomic Habits. And what we're talking about specifically is how to make and keep your New Year's habits. Um, as I'm discussing this, it's actually uh, we're on the cusp of the New Year's. I'm already thinking about my habits for 2000 and the next year. And then already thinking about the habits for two years from now, based on even me talking to you, which is one of my strategies for the upcoming year. What uh, James talks about, um, and I highlight it in my Inc. Magazine column. You can read it at IncDamonBrown.com. You can check out the show notes for that. What he talks about is how you can create these habits. And these habits really come down to systems. I'm really big on systems. If you're familiar with my work, particularly with um, The Ultimate Bite Size Entrepreneur, my bestseller from a few years ago, you know that I'm really big on systems and creating something that's long lasting rather than trying to quit or bring in um, bring in a new a new concept or a new habit just because you feel like doing it or it's time you actually have to create the systems that will facilitate that. He had a great conversation with Whitney Johnson. I met her a couple years ago. She's a coach. She's a leadership consultant, and she focuses on how people can adjust to what she calls the S curve. And the S curve is the curve of learning as you uh, plateau with a certain idea or a certain certain skill set. And as you plateau, you have to hop, hop on to the next X curve. Otherwise, you won't grow. Anyway, she has a podcast and a book called Disrupt Yourself. I highly recommend it. She talks to a few business leaders every week. I caught her conversation with James Clear, again, of uh, Atomic Habits, his best-selling book. It's been on bestseller list for several years at this point. It's crazy. He has a really big following with his newsletter, too, which is also about habits. And he says it comes down to two big things. At least these are the insights that I got from him. The first thing is that you want to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to aim for 1%. Aim for 1%. Um, this has become a trend as of late, um, but he was, I believe, the first person to really talk about this. And when he says 1%, he means that, for instance, if you're trying to eat healthier, then you don't say, I'm going to go on this crash diet and change everything in my life right now. You're gonna say, I'm gonna put a little bit less salt in my meal tonight. And then I'm gonna do it by 1%. If you say that you're going to run every day, and I used to run, now I walk because I've slowed down a little bit as I've gotten older and my knees can't handle it as much. But if you're going to be a regular runner, you don't say, I'm gonna go out and run a marathon every night. What you say is, I'm gonna go ahead and take a really brisk walk around the block and I'm going to speed it up a little bit more and a little bit more. If you change it by 1%, that ends up making a big difference. Excuse me. In um, Atomic Habits, in one of the first, like the first or second chapter, he actually breaks down the math. He's really into math. And so he breaks down the math where he says, if you actually, every day, if you have a habit and you increase it, that potential by 1%, then you actually will make a huge stride in whatever it is. You can look about it, look at it in financial terms. For instance, if you plan on saving, let's say um, you plan on saving ten dollars every month, or let's say every every week you plan on sa saving ten dollars, and then each week you increase it by one percent. So it's ten dollars this week. Next week it's ten dollars, and I think that would be ten dollars and ten cents if my math is correct. And then the we I'm sorry, ten dollars and one cent. Right, because it's a dollar. No, actually ten dollars, one dollar, ten cents. So ten dollars and ten cents the following week. But then the week after that, it wouldn't be another ten dollars and, and ten cents. It'll be ten dollars and whatever percentage it would be of ten dollars and ten dollars and ten cents up by one percent. 
So it almost becomes like a compound interest. I talk about that in my new book, uh, Built From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World. I actually have a special going on if you come through to davenbrown.net before January 28th of 2021. When the book comes out, you can actually pre-order it and get a special gift. So come through to my website. You can also grab it on all the major platforms, including audiobook by the time you watch or read this or listen to this. But I talk about how there's a sense of compound interest with whatever we do. For instance, me speaking to you right now, the reason why I'm able to speak to you through the computer and through this discussion and have my office set up and all that stuff is because I've done several TED Talks and I've been doing keynotes professionally for, at this point, several years. And I've coached, um, at this point, hundreds, if not thousands of people with one-on-one -on -one coaching with the setup that I have right here. And so this is my comfort zone. But it wasn't always my comfort zone. At first, it was very, very awkward. But that came from that 1% of increasing it every day. So I digress on that. My point is that if you are going to start a New Year's habit and you want to look at it like that, that's going to be Jan 1 is going to be your definitive thing or whatever you start your New Year, your birthday or whatever. Don't necessarily look at it as, okay, this day is going to start. I'm going to go cold turkey, as we say, and I'm just going to do this extreme thing. Instead, look at it as I'm going to increase it by 1% and set up some type of metrics. 1% every day, 1% every week, 1% every month. And that helps. I have a meditation practice. And when I first started meditating, I would meditate for, I believe, for one minute, which is actually very difficult if you've ever tried it and you didn't know what you're doing. Um, and that increased to three minutes. And then it finally increased to five minutes. But it's such a natural habit and it slowed and it went smooth enough where it wasn't painful. And that's what he's getting at. Because if it's painful, then you want to be able to do this particular habit come February 1st, come May 1st, heck, come December 1st, 11 months in, you still want to be able to do this habit and not stress yourself out, especially as outside forces come in, such as real life. So number one, aiming for 1%. Number two, along those lines, he's recommending that you aim low. You aim low. We have this term, uh, particularly when I was in Silicon Valley, but it's become more popular around the world, uh, the idea, uh, idea of a big, hairy, audacious goal, or a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal, where you say, um, I'm going to go ahead and I don't have any clients right now, but I'm going to have a million clients or a million people reading my book, or I have a thousand clients all paying me buku bucks within the next five years. That's a B hack. With that strategy, which is different than what he's saying, with that strategy, it's saying, wow, if you're going to reach that enormous goal, then you need to create these systems and you'll stretch yourself. It's called a stretch goal. You'll stretch yourself so much that that you'll you'll make some improvement. He's actually arguing, I believe, the opposite, which I think is an interesting technique. He's saying aim extremely low so that you'll get confidence, you'll be able to create systems on a smaller scale, and you'll get momentum. We uh, see this within the financial, financial um, recommendations or coaching space where they talk about paying down debt or your mortgage or credit cards or whatever, where they say go and start, start with the smallest one and it might take you like a week to pay off that particular card or that particular part of the mortgage or whatever you, you owe. But once you pay off that smallest part, then you get those endorphins, you get that confidence, you get the momentum. It's like, OK, well, let's tackle the next one. And you just kind of keep going. There's a lot of great theories on this. There's one that I heard from Tim Ferriss a na number of years ago on his podcast where he talked about the early days of IBM. And this is actually the era not so much early days, but when they were they were starting to go towards their peak. And we're talking probably around the time that I was born or before then, so we're talking the 60s and the 70s. And what they would do is that was back when you had to sell to the major corporations because the PC, <laughs> what I'm literally talking to you on, didn't exist, right? The computers took up whole rooms. They were called mainframes. And so the only people that could afford those would be corporations, like major school districts, government, and so forth. So they get these big contracts. The salespeople would go out or they make phone calls and that month, that week, whenever that new sales cycle would start, they'd have a ridiculously small goal. So it's like if their normal mainframe average as far as selling it would be selling 10 of them a month, then they'd be like, great, your goal for our focus for October 
is to sell one mainframe. That's it. You don't have to sell 10, you don't have to sell five, you don't have to sell three, just sell one. So then Monday morning comes, the first day of October, or whatever, first day of that cycle, they make that phone call and then they're ready to knock it out the park. They go ahead and get that sale done. And then, you know, it's Tuesday and they already fulfilled their goal. And that creates a sort of momentum. With that system that IBM had, again, back in the 60s and 70s, their sales force became really, really pop popular and powerful because they had so much momentum because they had successes back to back. And they were quadrupling, quintupling, whatever, these sales goals and going even higher than their averages once they installed that. So what happens is that you start to get a momentum based on taking this approach. Again, I talk about this in The Bite Size Entrepreneur, which is why it's called The Bite Size Entrepreneur. If you're not, if you're not familiar with my background, uh, several years ago, um, I became a stay-at-home dad with uh, my wife and I's first son. Uh, he was four months old when my wife went back to work, and at the exact same time, I became an entrepreneur. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd recommend it, but that was the deal. I am doing two startups. I bootstrapped both of them. The second startup got really popular. It was called Cuddler. We had a quarter million users within a couple months. We were on the late night talk shows. It got really, again, really popular. That year, 2014, it was uh, the number one app in several countries and definitely one of the most talked about apps of that period of time. We ended up selling the app and it got acquired about a year later, around the time that my son turned two. And me leading those two startups, the one I did on my own and the one I did as a co-founder, um, I couldn't give 500%. That wasn't possible because I still wanted to take care of my kid, obviously. I didn't want to abandon him, just leave him there while I'm trying to run a startup and I'm talking to the Wall Street Journal and handling customers. But at the same time, I knew that I wanted to make an impact on the world. And so I had to do it in bite-sized portions. And what that taught me is that you do not have to go to extremes to make amazing, amazing things happen. I tend to go to extremes uh, because if I really enjoy something or if I'm into something, then time and everything just kind of slips by. The biggest lesson I learned from becoming a father, and you might learn it a different way, is that it's possible to do amazing things within the parameters of not burning yourself out or stressing yourself out or pushing yourself too hard. That's what I believe um, uh, the Atomic Habits author is talking about. Um, James Clear is really focused on, on, again, the atomic idea, little bite-sized portions of that. And so some really good insights there. So if you're working on your New Year's goals, again, I'm already thinking about two years from now, which is why I tend to think. If you're having some challenges thinking strategically, however, number one, if you're thinking about your New, Year, New Year's habits, think about it as far as systems. And if you're creating these systems, look at how you can build it at 1%. You do not need to build Rome in a day. So 1%, maybe each day if it's a daily habit. Maybe if you're a smoker and you do a pack a day, maybe you have one less than a pack a day. And then you slowly climatize down as they do in the, the mountain climbing industry. So number one, looking at aiming at 1%. Number two, as James Clear talks about, look at aiming low. So having lower expectations. The book that I have coming out, again, um, built from now, January 28th uh, of 2021, come through to danbrown.net and you can pre-order it directly from me and get it signed and a lot of other goodies that are available on the website. You can check it out at danbrown.net. Um, I don't know if it's going to become my next bestseller. I've had a couple under my belt. I don't know if it's going to flop. I don't know if it's going to resonate with you or it could resonate with you on levels that I have never could imagine. The point is, is that I'm showing up and my aim is low for it because my metrics are based on, frankly, things that I can control. And I've talked about that in, in other videos and other discussions where one of the best things you can do as you create these habits, as you aim for 1% and as you aim low, is to make sure you're creating something that you actually have control over. Because if I say this book has to be a bestseller and that's going to be the metric, there's way too many factors in that. I've released books I thought were going to do okay that became bestsellers. And I've released books that I thought were going to be amazing in the marketplace and they, they dropped like rocks in a shallow river. And so creating those habits that you actually have control over, then that allows you to go for just 1% each day or each increment and allows you to aim low in a way that you wouldn't be able to do 
if you had outside influences and that outside pressure. So make sure to make your own metrics as I talk about more extensively in the new book, Build From Now. If you want to learn more about building from now and how you can master your resources, go over and take my free quiz over at buildfromnowquiz.com. That's buildfromnowquiz.com. It's based on the book. It's free. It's three or four questions, multiple choice. Hundreds of y'all have taken it now, which I'm really grateful for. So I'm really trying to help you get to where you need to be. And if you're interested in the book, there's more information about it there. And if you want to read the book and you're already planning on it, then it gives you a good primer so that when the book comes out on January 28th of 2021, then you'll be all ready for it and you get some good insight from it. Um, hope this helps you on your journey. As far as thinking about your New Year's habits, good luck. Enjoy the new year if it's that time of year for you or your birthday or whatever period of time you consider to be the next part of your cycle. Remember that you always should bring your worth and that you can always build from now. Take care.